Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. My name is Francesco Corti and I'm a product evangelist for Alfresco. Uh, today we are here talk with uh, David Anton uh, from Mimacon. Hi, David, how are you? Hi, fine. And uh, Francesco Malaghino from uh, Premier Services uh, Alfresco. Hi, Francesco, how are you? Hi, I am fine, thank you. Okay, very nice to have you here. Uh, today we are missing Kristen Gastalco though because uh, she's in Boston under a, 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 a snowstorm. So Kristen, we are missing you, but uh, soon I hope we will have you on board. Uh, just a few notes uh, for uh, the next uh, events. So um, next 29th of March, we plan to have uh, an office hours with Brian Remington and uh, because we would like to talk about the digital business, Alfresco digital business platform and receive some feedback uh, from you guys if you, uh, and especially if you attend the DevCon, but not only if you attend the DevCon, we will talk about the digital business platform. We would like to have a feedback from you uh, about thoughts and uh, what you will discover in the office hour. We plan to have, of course, uh, uh, another Tech Talk Live next month uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, with uh, let me let me see the notes because I forgot it. So the next eleventh uh, of April, uh, we plan to have uh, Bert Moons and Casper uh, from Incento talking about ADF uh, example in integrating uh, uh, AOS, so Alfresco Office Services. Uh, so now I will stop talking because today we would like to share with you two nice presentations from David and uh, Francesco that uh, we didn't have the chance uh, to have in the past DevCon. This is the long tail and the long wave of the DevCon. So uh, we will see uh, David talking about generating the um, documents from a template and Francesco uh, about integrating uh, Alfresco process services and Salesforce. Don't want to waste time anymore. We'll start with David uh, with uh, uh, half of the webinar talking about his presentation and then we will continue uh, with Francesco. If you want to ask a question, please uh, use chat.alfresco.com, so our IC channel or our YouTube chat uh, uh, where you are seeing the, the webinar. We will be happy to collect the question and raise the question to David and Francesco and discuss uh, at the end of their presentation. Thank you again. And uh, David, I leave the mic to you. Okay, thank you, Francesco. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Now it's okay? Yes, I can see share. Perfect. So first, I'm going to, to introduce myself for the people who don't know me. I'm uh, David Anton. I'm from Zaragoza. And I work as a software engineer uh, here in, in Mimacom in the, in the offices of, of Barcelona. And uh, now I, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, how to uh, generate uh, dynamically documents uh, from templates and uh, then a, a, a print integration. Um, first, I'm going to show uh, some technical details about the, the process, and then I will conclude with, with a, a live demo. Okay, uh, first, uh, to introduce a bit the, the business case, uh, it's uh, a break for a pharma customer that uh, uh, they want to, to standardize the, it, it, its document. And uh, the first uh, requirement is to, uh, the documents must accomplish the GMP. The GMP is uh, a quality standard, but uh, it's not, not the goal of this presentation, but only uh, for, for you, you know this detail. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the Alfresco uh, must uh, have one, one custom DocX template for, for each uh, different type of, of this customer. And you, you can create documents from, from these templates. And uh, 
when when the docx document uh, it's approved uh, for for all, all the approvals in the in the workflow uh, they can uh, generate uh, pdf files and these pdf files uh, will uh, field automatically uh, from uh, two 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 modes like uh, spring boot application uh, it's an external system for an for uh, audits and uh, the other is the alfresco uh, metadata all the metadata information of the document and then when when the document is uh, fulfilled uh, will will uh, put a, a watermark and uh, finally uh, the the customer uh, have the possibility to to print this document from all the net uh, network printers uh, that they have uh, there in the in the company okay so this is the the typical template that i'm going to use in this in this presentation and uh, the the document templates are are a good way to to create uh, documents uh, also uh, save save time in writing common parts uh, for example the 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 index or the header or the footer of of a document and also it's it's a good way in in our case to follow the the gmp standards this the, this business case but uh, what happens if if we created a uh, thousand and thousand of documents and uh, we want uh, to to update the template because the, this this template uh, was wrong or or another uh, case uh, if we want to update the, the metadata of the of the document so it's it's uh, it's a problem uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, to uh, update uh, all the documents manually uh, it's it, it's a loss of time so in the next in the next um, steps i will show you uh, how to uh, automate this process in, in, this is the the first step it's to identify uh, what parts of a document uh, might change in the future or or or, or if you know that uh, are going to change uh, identify it and uh, we use the the library doc, docx for java to to remove these parts in in our cases uh, we remove the the header and the footer and uh, other two pages that are the the cover page and the history page or both bodies because we want to uh, to fill all of its metadata and uh, to uh, make a union in in the in the pdf and uh, you can see here a, a, an image with a piece of code and how to uh, how to do it uh, with uh, the docx for java how to remove the the header and the footer it's simply a, a loop uh, from all the relationships uh, from the docx document and when we find a, a relationship that is uh, from the type that it's a header or a footer we we remove it and uh, we save the the document and the the final state we have a docx document without uh, with with some gaps in this case the header and the footer the next step is uh, to generate uh, and, and fill uh, these gaps uh, we use it for free, free marker templates you can see the, the first image is it's an example of of a free marker template of the header and uh, we have to to transform first to fill all of the, the properties and then to to transform it in in an html string and then we, when we have the, this this uh, string, we we encrust it in the in the PDF. Uh, in the second images, uh, you can see another piece of of code that we have a, a template. It's a free marker file, and we fill uh, all the all the variables from a, a properties from the metadata of Alfresco, 
and then uh, we generate the output it's uh, simply a, a string an html string and uh, finally the last uh, step is to uh, make a union or join all, all of these parts of that we generated and, and generate a, a PDF. Uh, we use this uh, iText and uh, also you can see in the, in the right uh, two piece of code and for how to generate uh, from a, a string that is the HTML that we generate with FreeMarker. Uh, we iterate from all of its elements and we generate PDF cells. These PDF cells we, uh, we can uh, construct with iText uh, the whole the whole document as you can see in the in the next step. This is the the final final result. Uh, also, we used i iText to to increase the the watermark. And this is uh, all the process that we use to to change dynamically the the content of of a of a document. As, as a summary, uh, first we have the the doc, uh, docx template. We use the docx for Java to remove the the um, critical parts and uh, the, the critical parts or the parts that we know. Um, to we want to update the, the metadata and uh, the next step is with free marker generate uh, the content for these gaps and finally with itext uh, make a join of all 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 of the content and as a conclusion uh, uh, we with this approach we we can uh, modify documents dynamically as as, I, as you can see in the in these steps, also uh, you can change the the free marker templates on on runtime, and you you could change it with without uh, restart the the server. And also the the most important, uh, you don't have to to edit uh, manually the the documents. And then the the other integration is the network printing. It's not a usual integration in the document management uh, things, but in, in some business cases, it's necessary to, to use it and uh, print documents and archive it uh, physically. And for this, for this thing, uh, we used uh, CAPS. Uh, that CAPS is a common Unix printing system. It's, it's a server that uh, allows you uh, to print uh, documents, uh, generate uh, print jobs, and uh, manage it and send it to to a specific printer uh, in in a in a local network. So you you, you can be in, uh, in your home and uh, send documents uh, to to this system and print in in the in the local network. And here uh, uh, we used uh, Coops for Java. It's a library to integrate with with this system. And I I attach you here a, a piece of code and how uh, to get the printers with with caps. It's uh, only passing the the host and the port of the server, and you get all all the printers and and integrate it with Alfresco and uh, print a view like the, the right image. And then another uh, piece of code uh, and for how uh, to create uh, print jobs uh, from a byte array. Uh, a byte array is the content of the document and you can invoke to the, to the um, COPS client and uh, create jobs and send to, to a printer ID uh, specifically. Okay, so this is the, the technical part of the presentation. Now I'm going to, to show you a, a little demo about uh, what is the, the Alfresco real integration with, with, this, with this thing. 
First, uh, here we have uh, the menu uh, for create uh, documents from, from templates. We have here three, three different types and we can choose uh, one, one document, one, uh, one template and create a document from, from this template. Okay, this is the document that I created. And the first thing in our case is to fill all, all the mandatory metadata. In this case, I can set the title alfresco text talk. And another metadata, and I save it. And now uh, I have a new action that uh, it's the start of the of the workflow. Uh, the workflow is it's so simple, but uh, have uh, two steps. The first is the the redaction of the document, and when this step is finished. Uh, People uh, reviewed these these changes and uh, passes to an approval uh, step. Now you are going to see in the in the demo, and uh, also uh, we have an integration uh, for a, a signed manifest. So all of the changes that we made in the in the document are archived in a in an audit system, and then we we can. Uh, take it and print it in, in some actions here in, in Alfresco. Okay, so we have the document in, in redaction step, so we can uh, modify the, the content of the document, but I'm not going to do it because it's not necessary. I'm going to start a review process. Now it's, it's in, in review state. And uh, the responsible of the review is this, this user. I'm going to change the, the view. And I take the link and change the view to another user. That is the RCD. And we can see that uh, there is a task that uh, the RCD must uh, complete. Okay, so review complete. Also, I have to put the password, these things. And now the the document is if I update the page, okay, it's changed to a review state. Now the next step is to assign an approve an approver. Uh, I also use the, the same user. It's only a simple demo. And then I must uh, init the, the approval process. Okay, if I change the window to the other user, okay, I, I will see here an approval task that I must complete, approved. And then when I have uh, this document in approved state, I'm going to see here, okay, now it's in approved state. So I can now uh, generate the, the PDF with all the metadata that I uh, put here in the in the document, so this is the action. I create a control copy. Moment. Create a control copy. Uh, okay. And now uh, you can see here the the list of of printers that are here in the in my local network. I have the the office printer and also a uh, a server that it's a local server. I'm going to use it to show you the the result of the of the print. Okay, now the control copy is created, and I'm going to show you the PDF that is generated. Well, 
here. It's the, the document with the title that uh, we put and uh, the template that we have here in the, in the repository. And all of these fields are generated dynamically uh, from a free marker template. Okay, the process is it's finished, but I'm going to make a final change. Uh, what happens if, if I change the, the free marker template, for example, in this case, the, the header? I want to change the header and upload a new version that I changed uh, some minutes ago. I have here okay, this one. I'm going to update this free marker template. And now uh, I want to, to generate uh, the same uh, copy control PDF. And as we are going to see, the content has changed. Now I select the printer. And wait a moment, it's created. And now, as you can see here, the other document, well, has changed the, in this case, I changed the logo, but the, the other content, it's, it's the same. I also changed uh, here a, a, a literal, but, so this is the, the process and it's simply, and you don't need to, to restart the server and uh, you can change the content of the document uh, in, 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 without restarting and, and without change the document uh, manually. And uh, to conclude the presentation, I want to thank you uh, to two other members of the, of the Alfresco MIMACOM team, that's uh, Eduardo and uh, Beatriz. And here uh, you have all my uh, social media information and uh, email if you want to, to contact me if you have doubts or something like that you can do it and for my part it's everything thank you david really interesting we can stop sharing your screen okay. probably but so we can yep. do it in your face thank you for your presentation again i would like to invite all the people to raise the question in the rc channel so at uh, uh, chat.alfresco.com or in the YouTube chat, uh, then we will discuss about the question and answers uh, after at the end of, of the both the presentation. Now I would like uh, to, sh to give the microphone to Francesco Malagrino and uh, that will introduce us to an integration uh, on uh, Alfresco process services and uh, Salesforce. The mic to you, Francesco. Yeah. I... Uh, can you see my share, my screen? Yes, perfectly. We can see David now at the moment, yes. but yes, we can see your yes, screen. Okay. Uh, so let's start. So about me, my name is uh, Francesco Malagrino, but uh, for uh, uh, all uh, the rest of Europe, it's uh, Malagrino. I am a technical account manager in the Premier Service at Alfresco. I am born to Bari in South Italy, but I moved when I was 24 to Milan and when I was uh, 30 to the UK. Uh, I speak two fluent languages, Italian and English, but uh, I am learning a bit of Japanese. Uh, I love soccer, soccer or football, and I am a supporter of Juventus, and I am also a world uh, a Warcraft player, and I love everything uh, that have to do with uh, information technology. Uh, the prerequisite uh, for this project is that you must have uh, a Salesforce account, it can be or the enterprise or the developer account. You must have an OAuth application inside Salesforce, and uh, you need to uh, have a little knowledge of Java and Salesforce uh, API. Uh, so this is uh, the process overview. This is the process that uh, I will talk about. So we will talk about uh, all uh, the service uh, tasks that uh, you have done. 
And as we saw from the process, we have three service tasks, three human tasks. Uh, the first service task is to integrate uh, the Salesforce uh, with the uh, Alfresco process service. Uh, we will use one uh, property file with uh, all the information that we need for uh, the authentication. So it will be the host, the username, uh, the password, and the secret token, uh, the client ID, and the client secret. Uh, the last two properties, uh, these two can be taken from the app that you will create uh, or have been created on uh, Salesforce. Uh, if you are an admin on Salesforce, you need to create an app uh, for the auto authentication. So it's uh, on Salesforce, it's, uh, you should go under create apps, connected apps, and you can create a new connected apps. Uh, you need a uh, uh, tick uh, enable or two settings. And here you can give uh, all uh, the assets uh, that you want permits uh, on these uh, apps uh, to do. In my case, uh, yeah, I gave uh, full assets. Uh, when you have finished the creation of the app, uh, you can go again on create apps, connected apps and uh, click under the apps that you have uh, just created or uh, if uh, or selected, then under API enable all two settings, and you can retrieve client ID and client secrets. Uh, the client ID is the consumer key, and the client secret is the consumer uh, secret. Uh, now the only things that we miss it's uh, the token, so you need to recover the token. And for doing this, you need going under uh, your uh, uh, name. So in my case, uh, Francesco Margrino, uh, settings. Uh, then uh, on the left, uh, you need click uh, reset uh, my security token. And then uh, you need click again, reset my security token. Uh, if you have done uh, perfectly fine, you should receive an email with uh, the security token. Uh, for testing, just uh, if you can connect or not with uh, your uh, your account on uh, Salesforce, uh, you uh, use the Postman. Uh, you need to know what API to call. So in this case, it's a service or to token. Uh, it's a post call, and so in this case, uh, you need to add in the body. Uh, grant type password, your client ID, your client secret, your username, the password, and your security token. Uh, as an example, one, two, three, four, five token security. Uh, and this is uh, how should uh, uh, this is uh, the display that you should uh, retrieve as a token if ever think it's fine. And and now we can see a little demo, and then we can see the code. Uh, so, one second. So this is my process. I can go here. I run, I start the uh, menu. Uh, in my case, uh, I select uh, my account that in this case, it's Gene point. Click complete and I retrieve uh, everything from my account. So um, the account ID, the account name, the website on Salesforce, who is the no owner, uh, the creation date, the fax, uh, the SIC company website, the phone, uh, industry, account name, and so on. Then here I can change uh, something, but uh, I just changed the, the SIC. Uh, then you click complete, and uh, now you have the last uh, uh, service task that uh, this is, that will just uh, show to you all the modification. So in this case, I have modified from three seven one two two to three seven one two one, and if I go on the Salesforce, I can see that. Uh, uh, my modify is uh, in uh, directly live on uh, on Salesforce, so it's a uh, two one. Uh, 
for make this i have used the uh, eclipse uh, and here is so i just create three uh, java code so this is the first that is the one that just check uh, and uh, take from uh, the property file uh, the value like os username password client id and client secrets uh, for make this uh, the main point it's this one so I use an input stream uh, and uh, i resource uh, i get the resource that it's in case in my case i call it salesforce properties and then i get uh, the properties that i want so salesforce host for the host for the username salesforce username if you have called it abc it was just abc dot username abc dot os or how you defined it and then i set the variable so i create a variable host with the value host uh, the username with the username the password with the password client d and so on uh, the second class, uh, it's uh, th this one is uh, the one that uh, uh, after we re retrieve the token, we can actually use it. So uh, here I I will uh, get the variable again. So uh, in the first one was set variable, here it's get variable. So I take the variable host, username, password, client, ID, and client secret that uh, we just created uh, and then i mm, practically use the post as uh, action and uh, i mm, use it uh, uh, for uh, getting the uh, for passing the username uh, the password uh, the client the client secret for uh, uh, having the bidder uh, the token that I need, and then I make another, uh, in this case, a get uh, API, and uh, I will uh, retrieve the token, and then uh, I put the header, and inside the header I put the token, uh, and then uh, when I have the header, finally I can actually uh, try to get the variable that I want, like the name, uh, the variable, uh, then uh, in this case, uh, since uh, I try as well to uh, <clears throat> found uh, the account ID and other uh, variable, I have made another call, uh, another get call, and uh, I, in this case, uh, I use directly uh, the website uh, uh, if you don't want to use uh, the full website uh, uh, in clear you can use the host uh, uh, variable if it's uh, the same and then uh, i go inside uh, the node and i retrieve the account id i retrieve uh, the website uh, i retrieve the phone the fax the account number the industry uh and then i execute uh, the variable form fax account number in dc sick here was an example for take the photo that perhaps uh, i don't use anymore uh, i get the owner id so it's just uh, uh, i will enter inside uh, uh, this method it's just uh, uh, so i am inside the json and uh, i find the value uh, honor ID and then I transform it to, to string and then I replace the space uh, or the, the, the dash uh, with uh, empty stuff. Uh, for the owner, in this case, it's another call because uh, the owner is in another API. In this case, it's under user API and it's just simple uh, the call. Uh, I get the URL, I put the token, I add it uh, in the header, and then uh, I just uh, retrieve uh, uh, the value. Uh, also, in this case, I found also the creation date, and then I just uh, uh, 
uh, first was a uh, string and then I made made it again as uh, data so and that's uh, uh, the let's say the complex uh, delegate uh, Java delegate then we have just the last one and the last one it's uh, um, practically showing uh, if you have uh, uh, modified something or not so it will be most of the same so again host username password client client secret uh, the post call and then uh, um, I will uh, just retrieve uh, the variable uh, account ID uh, the URL uh, then uh, I will use the patch in this case uh, it's the patch uh, and not the post because uh, if you want to uh, update something on uh, Salesforce uh, it's not post but a patch um, and then I just uh, try the, the website so if I change the website uh, uh, the phone the fax uh, the account number the industry and sick um, th that's all from Java perspective uh, and um, I forgot to mention that uh, of course when I designed the uh, uh, the workflow I also save uh, some variable so you have 24 variable uh, on global variable and so for example we have the URL uh, the manager D the owner ID and the website um, and that's uh, really all uh, about um, <clears throat> the integration that uh, you have uh, done with uh, um, with um, Salesforce. Okay, thank you. I, I think I can take the mic back. Uh, I know if you uh, finish your presentation, Francesco and David, but in any case, thank you very much. Uh, really interesting to see two different, very different use cases. Uh, so if you have question, please, is the, let me say, last chance to share them. Uh, uh, in the chat.alfresco.com or in the YouTube chat. So lots of comments uh, in, in both places. Uh, in the RC channel, we have been distracted a little bit with the Postgres guys, with the Postgres discussion, but it's interesting to, to, to see technical uh, discussion around that. Um, so one question for David, so for David uh, about uh, Benchmarking. Did you have the chance to try with a massive uh, production of documents? So, which is the uh, the so is it heavy that solution or is it is it light? Which is your experience? Uh, because as I understand, it's a it's a concrete project that you use for some customers. So you have probably some feedback, uh, of course, about uh, uh, complaints apart because every project has its complaints. But uh, what about benchmarking? Uh, we we use it only uh, in individual documents that. Uh, they want to to do the same workflow that I, I show you in in the <clears throat> live demo, but uh, the, the the use case is that uh, sometimes they want to to change something in the document, but uh, in for for example in the header, but uh, they they used uh, an old template and. Uh, they don't. They don't need uh, to change manually uh, other documents. Uh, for the new, uh, it's uh, the template. It, it's uh, updated, but for the old documents, uh, will be the, the same content. But we 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 didn't try with with a lot of documents. Only only individual ones. Okay. Cool. And uh, uh, can you can you? Share your experience because I'm cool. I'm personally curious. What about your experience with? Uh, uh, I don't remember if you can talk more about the printer server solution because yeah. I, I didn't know that. But it's it sounds to be quite interesting because let me know in my experience developing project on over in Alfresco content services. I mean, uh, the interaction with uh, printers, scanners, servers, it's always a pain. Uh, so, I mean, a, a relevant 
part of the of the project, uh, especially for the customers. Uh, which is uh, so? Is it as an open source solution? How it works? Which is your experience? Uh, can, can you talk more about that? Yeah, it's 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 an open source solution, and we use it uh, as as I told uh, for for a network uh, printers uh, in, in the customer. So uh, they have like uh, 20 or 30 uh, different printers and uh, they want to, to print in, in some depart uh, particular department. So they, they create the document, uh, approve them and print in the concrete department that they, they want to, to have the, the document. And the most difficult part of, of this thing is uh, with different type of printers that uh, have the, the same content and don't, uh, don't change the format of the, of the document, but uh, I the think out, probably. It, it, it's a, a good integration for, for, this, uh, for these cases. So would you suggest to the developers to use it uh, in their use cases or do you suggest to, to find something, to try something different? I suggest to use it only uh, Alfresco as document management, not uh, going to the past and print documents. I think the, the good of the document management is not having physical documents, but in some cases it's, it's necessary. Yeah, sure, sure. Good, good advice. Thank you for <laughs> that. We can tell to the clients, you don't have to print. It's a void. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, first of all, just to give a feedback for Francesco. Uh, Francesco, thank you for your log comments, banana, banana too. I appreciate it a lot in your source code. Jokes apart, uh, I enjoy to see how also how to develop. One of the questions I have in mind, if... Uh, we saw all the, uh, how it works, the integration. It's really nice to see a practical integration between two di completely different servers and solutions. What about, uh, 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 so APS? I mean, we saw the source code uh, for Alfresco Process Services, that is the enterprise edition yeah. of the open source, that is activity engine. In your opinion, can it work from a from a Java perspective, from a from a from a development perspective, also with the open source solution, or which is the constraint, or why did you use uh, Alfresco Process Services, the enterprise version? Um, uh, well, in uh, in the past uh, with Engine Five uh, uh, was very hard to make it because uh, there was missing some better the, the layout was uh, uh, absolutely uh, for me it was horrible respect to the process service uh, now that are actually the same uh, i tested it and it's possible uh, so it's possible also on uh, on uh, the active on the community edition to use uh, APS uh, or better activity and Salesforce. It's possible as well. But but the, there are so I mean the source code that you shared. It was for the enterprise. Yeah, but the, there are some some uh, let me say parts that uh, can work only with uh, APS or it, they can work also with activity no no, no. they can also work with uh, activity okay it was just uh, on it uh, at least for me that was habits always to use the oh. enterprise the oh. community edition with engine 5 and the bed layout so it was hard to me understand how i can import uh, the file and so on. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So, uh, uh, last question I have. So, uh, last chance, guys, to ask for some question to David and Francesco about the project you saw. Uh, so, uh, just uh, um, um, let me say, I I have experience to work with uh, 
uh, activity and APS, but uh, can you explain, starting from the source code, because probably for the, the newbies on the APS and activity uh, side, but it, you, you have seen also in the DevCon that the activity and APS, it's a very uh, interesting uh, topic that, we, that Alfresco is pushing harder to integrate content and process together, of course, to have a digital business platform. There is something more than content and process only, but it's something that includes content and process. So uh, long story short, uh, starting from the source code that you shared, how, how do you deploy uh, the, the Java code into the APS? So which is the path that a developer can follow to deploy the source code inside the, the APS uh, uh, and activity uh, uh, engine? If you can share your experience on that with the, with the newbies on uh, process services side. So, uh, my case, I just, uh, sorry? Si, si, we, ah. which is your recommended path? I mean, uh, uh, so it's, if you can introduce how, how do you deploy that part? Yeah. Uh, start from yeah. So as soon as I finish the class, uh, you can just uh, uh, download it as a jar. And uh, you can add uh, the jar under uh, the. My case, uh, since I use uh, the uh, the enterprise edition, it's under Activity App. Under Activity App Lib, so you just need to uh, go under the your web apps Activity App, and then uh, Webinf Lib, and uh, you can uh, save your jar there, and it will be loaded uh, without restarting so it will be just loaded and then you uh, can test uh, uh, with the service task and see if it's work or not what well, seems to be really easy uh, in the meantime from the ic channel we have uh, one more question uh, uh, for uh, uh, david so the question is uh, the uh, all the interaction with the templates are, do are done using Alfresco Share, but uh, is there some kinds of API if you want to work with the uh, templates independently from Alfresco Share, or uh, is, uh, is, is just strictly related to Alfresco Share? Can you, can you explain us how, which is, has been your solution on that? Uh, it's, it's not an, an, an API, it's... Uh, in the integration the integration of uh, with alfresco it's only uh, when you create the document it's done uh, from from default by by alfresco uh, we only have uh, <clears throat> docx documents in in the repository folder and then we create uh, new documents uh, from this template or this uh, type of uh, custom document but uh, the changes are uh, from this part. When we want to change a document, create with a specific template, N not, not to change the template. If you want to change the template, you have to change manually. But uh, documents that are created with a specific template, uh, you, you want to change uh, automatically, it's, it's, it's this, this solution. Yes, I mean, but probably the question is more related about the technical stuff. I mean, so probably you have some kinds of button or action on the share side. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Huh? And then this button mm -hmm. and action will call what? An Alfresco uh, backend service? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How it happened, the interaction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This is a, a button, that an, an Alfresco share action. Uh, it's that the create controlled copy that you see in the in the demo, and uh, this uh, call to a backend. It's it's not an API, but it's it's a, a custom class that uh, make all these changes. The the remove um, parts from docx for Java, uh, the <clears throat> the create the FTL free marker, and also the union with the ITEX. It's all of these steps uh, make in, in, in Java backend uh, uh, classes. So this is the, the process. 
Okay, cool. Uh, I think that uh, we reply to all the questions. Uh, I don't see uh, any more question in the IC channel or the YouTube chat. So I think that uh, that's all uh, from uh, our side. Of course, I want to thank you, uh, David and Francesco, not only for this presentation that has been valuable, in fact, we are here, but especially because, uh, again, this shows how the contribution to the developer conference is uh, available. So I think that we found two interesting topics that we would like also to, where we have to learn a lot and we, we, will, we would like to share in uh, between developers and to understand more how they works so thank you again for being with us i would like to remind to everyone that uh, the next uh, webinar uh, will happen uh, um, will happen uh, the 29th of march uh, uh, there is an office hour about community feedback on the developer business platform brian bramington uh, will be uh, with us uh, showing the digital business uh, platform and we would love to have some big feedbacks from you uh, because uh, uh, I think uh, one of uh, the key points is, is to have a strong interaction with our ecosystem of uh, developers, customer partners and enthusiasts in general. So uh, happy to get in touch with you. We'll, we'll, uh, we hope to see you to see a lot of you there and to have a great discussion uh, around the, the incoming digital business platform on top of Alfresco. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and uh, talk to you too for the next uh, uh, Tech Talk Live. Bye, thank you again.